tornadoes, earthquakes, forest fires, and other natural phenomena can destroy man-made structures. This is particularly true if buildings, bridges, and roads have not been designed to resist the tremendous force of natural disasters. Therefore, in order to protect the environment and the worker from potential exposure to harmful radiation, major efforts are being made to design and construct disaster-resistant nuclear facilities. Radiation protection for the environment and the worker has always been a major concern of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory. Recently, Los Alamos completed a facility that meets the Department of Energy's criteria for new plutonium facilities. It is the first fully disaster-resistant research and development laboratory in the nation for work with the most valuable nuclear fuel, plutonium. Potential disasters for this facility are earthquake, tornado, and fire. Another consideration is proximity to population groups. The Rocky Mountain location is very desirable for maximum security and minimal environmental interaction. All current security standards have been met. The facility is surrounded by a maximum security fence. The open area between the fence and the building complex is under constant surveillance. A bulletproof guard station and a vehicle inspection area regulate access at the single entrance. At this facility, radioactive material is handled and stored only in the plutonium building. Therefore, this building, its equipment and systems are considered critical to the safety of the environment. For the plutonium building, unique disaster-resistant construction is used. The rest of the facility uses conventional design and construction and has separate support services. The maximum credible earthquake for this site determined the resistive design of the plutonium building. This design was based on the risk data of the Rio Grande Rift in New Mexico. A lasso computer program of strong motion seismic recordings illustrates the location and strength of all major earthquakes. Although recent Los Alamos geologic history shows only moderate seismic activity, the Dames and Moore Corporation postulated a maximum earthquake of about 6.8 magnitude on the Richter scale, greater than the extreme 1971 San Fernando Valley earthquake in California. All components of critical systems, such as the emergency generator and ventilation blowers, were shown resistant to the model earthquake either by scientific analysis or testing. The plutonium building has 14-inch thick exterior walls and 10-inch thick roof and floor, all of heavily reinforced concrete. In addition, the facility sits solidly on volcanic rock, which offers substantial resistance to seismic motions. Although a tornado at the elevated Los Alamos location is an unlikely prospect, Professor T.T. Fujita of the University of Chicago was requested to design a model tornado. His study indicated a maximum tornado wind with a velocity of 200 miles per hour and a 0.75 pounds per square inch pressure drop. Projectile objects like these can become destructive missiles when hurled at tornado simulated speed. To resist the strength of the model tornado, the plutonium building has, in addition to the walls and roof, concrete barriers at all exits designed to withstand missiles of various sizes and shapes. Tests were performed by Sandia Laboratory in Albuquerque with similar tornado missile barriers. Earthquake resistant water tanks and pumps for fire control are at opposite ends of the site for safety from destructive wind forces. The unique ventilation system is designed to prevent any release of contamination from resulting differential pressures. The area surrounding the facility is clear, which eliminates the danger of a forest fire. 
The construction of the plutonium building, including walls, beams, and columns, is fire resistant. Use of combustible equipment and materials inside the building is limited to the extent possible. Nevertheless, the possibility of an internal fire was studied and a maximum model fire was calculated. Fire walls and fire doors in the glove box transfer stations and rooms will isolate a fire in its zone of origin. All glove boxes have individual fire sensors. All rooms have extensive fire detection, alarm, and automatic sprinkler systems. All floors are dished one and a half inches to safely disperse and hold sprinkler water, thus preventing the possibility of a nuclear criticality accident. The maximum model fire could last no longer than 30 minutes. Radioactive materials are handled and stored in the vault and the glove boxes in the processing laboratories of the plutonium building. All handling operations, equipment and support systems are designed to minimize personal exposure to radiation. Glove boxes are the primary system for containment of radioactive materials in the laboratories. By containing all of the airborne plutonium contaminants, personnel exposure to alpha radiation is eliminated. The special design of these glove boxes with lead sandwiched between layers of stainless steel minimizes exposure to penetrating gamma radiation from plutonium. Plexiglass windows and water tanks, primarily on plutonium-238 glove boxes, serve to shield personnel from neutron radiation. Radiation exposure is further reduced by the arrangement of working areas and schedules. Glove box lines are spaced at least seven feet apart, and work time at glove box stations is kept to a minimum whenever possible. Quick connector sleeves permit easy removal or addition of individual glove boxes, which gives maximum operational versatility. A unique overhead conveyor system is in operation at Los Alamos. This conveyor system, contained inside glove box type enclosures, serves to transfer nuclear materials between process locations while minimizing exposure time of personnel to contamination. Self-powered trolleys run through the conveyor tunnel so that process materials can be directed to any glove box line. Equipment and personnel are routinely monitored for radiation exposure in the plutonium building. These gloves and glove boxes are being monitored for alpha and neutron radiation. Whereas the maximum allowable exposure for occupational radiation workers has been set at 5 rem a year, the limit at this facility is one-fifth that amount, or 1 rem. Equipment design and processing operations are continually studied by the Lassell Nuclear Criticality Safety Committee to ensure against a criticality accident. The maximum quantity of fissionable materials allowed in a glove box or conveyor is less than half the amount required to create a critical mass under possible conditions. Throughout the plutonium building, detectors linked to an alarm system monitor gamma radiation levels to warn of a possible criticality accident. A unique online inventory control system has been designed at Lassell to administer safeguards accountability and process monitoring of nuclear materials. It is called DIMAC, for Dynamic Materials Control. This system uses computer-linked non-destructive assay instruments, such as this thermal neutron coincidence counter, to measure material at each processing stage. Accurate and timely nuclear material production data and inventory reports are available with the DIMAC program, thus permitting a more efficient laboratory operation. All support services and distribution systems are located in the basement of the plutonium building. Emergency power to all critical systems will be provided 
by an earthquake-resistant diesel generator if the primary and secondary distribution systems fail. Emergency electrical power to critical instruments, including the control room computers, is furnished by battery power. Ventilation in the plutonium building is extremely complex because it must function as the main protective system for the control of any airborne radioactive particulates. Filtration is accomplished with 99.97% high efficiency particulate air sole or HEPA filters. The configuration of the steel chambers containing these filters can withstand large increases in pressure differentials that could occur in a tornado. The quantity of intake air is fixed, while the air flow out of the exhaust stack may be varied. This simplifies the control of the air pressure inside so that it can be maintained lower than the air pressure outside of the building. In addition to providing clean air for the worker, this airflow design ensures that all contaminated airborne material remains within the protective confines of the building and cannot escape to the atmosphere. The basic principle involved in this unique lasso design is demonstrated here. Three gradually reduced pressure areas exist in the plutonium building. Air always flows into the area of lowest pressure. Let's look at this principle in operation. Air is not contaminated until it reaches the glove boxes where the lowest pressure area is maintained. Incoming air is dried before it passes through the HEPA filters. For greatest possible protection, Air flows only once through a glove box. Contaminated air in the glove box is completely purified as it is exhausted through a minimum of four HEPA filters. The second lowest pressure area is maintained in the processing room. Although this air is uncontaminated but additionally purified, it is recirculated seven times an hour with only a 10% extraction loss. This energy efficient system is the first of its kind in the country. As a safety precaution, airflow in the facility is checked for airborne alpha particles by continuous air monitors called CAMs. If an accidental release of alpha radiation is detected, a CAM will activate an alarm, signaling immediate temporary evacuation of personnel from the contaminated room. After the source of radiation is located and removed, Contaminated particulates in the air pass through HEPA filters until purified. In this way, the ventilation system can actually rinse itself clean and workers can return in minimal time to a safe room. As a final precaution, a third pressure area surrounds the room area. Incoming air is filtered as it enters the building and as it is exhausted. The ventilation system is flexible and readily adapts to external changes in air pressure. If an eye of a tornado, which is a reduced pressure center, passes over the exhaust stack, the building airflow temporarily increases while still maintaining a lower pressure inside the building. Should the eye of a tornado pass over the air intake stack, it could cause a temporary reverse of the building airflow. Since the intake stack is protected by HEPA filters, air released to the environment is always safe. Located in the control room of the plutonium building are two earthquake resistant computers, one always available as a backup. The computers monitor and control most of the building and equipment systems using field multiplex units located throughout the facility. These multiplex units are linked to the cams, fire sensors, ventilation pressure sensors and blowers, and electrical distribution systems. Abnormal events will automatically sound an alarm in the control room and the distressed area. Laboratories in the plutonium building are divided into four general areas. These are the plutonium-239 research and development, plutonium-238 R&D, metal fabrication, and the Plutonium Scrap Recovery and Metal Preparation Laboratories. 
the largest advanced fuel development program in the country for liquid metal fast breeder reactors is conducted in the plutonium 239 R&D laboratory. This program is concerned with the development of new compounds, methods of fabrication, determination of fundamental properties, and study of irradiation performance on the advanced fuels. In addition, synthesis of plutonium compounds is done in this area. Physical and chemical properties of plutonium and its compounds are other areas of interest. The plutonium-238 R&D laboratory is concerned with developing and evaluating fuel to provide heat sources for electrical power generation in the U.S. space program. The plutonium-238 isotope is uniquely suited as a continuous heat source where fuel weight is of overriding importance. Heat from plutonium-238 generated the electrical power for the Apollo moon mission instruments, which are still in operation today. All foundry equipment is specially designed for use inside of glove boxes. Plutonium metal is alloyed and cast into desired forms in the foundry section of the metal fabrication laboratory. The metal is melted by induction heating in a vacuum furnace. Fabricated parts are used in the weapons program, reactor and criticality studies, and radiation detection systems. Plutonium metal is machined in inert atmospheres to prevent the fine chips from burning. Here, a plutonium button is being sawed in an air atmosphere to illustrate its very reactive nature. Plutonium alloy development and property measurements are other metal fabrication programs. All plutonium scrap is meticulously saved and transferred to the recovery area. The plutonium recovery program is another important feature of the Lasso facility. Plutonium is recovered from the variety of residues created by processes and R&D operations at Lassell and other Department of Energy facilities. Plutonium solutions are stored in six-inch diameter stainless steel tanks to prevent a nuclear criticality accident. This Lassell recovery program has aided the reduction of the nation's plutonium scrap inventory. In the metal preparation laboratory, Recovered usable metal can be further processed to ultra-high purity by electro-refining. The Bureau of Standards distributes samples of Lassell plutonium as the primary chemical standard. The plutonium facility of the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory is not only safe to the environment and the worker, but it is the most complete and versatile facility in the U.S. as well. It is the first facility designed and constructed to Department of Energy criteria to resist all potential disasters. Unique features of the equipment and system design, such as the ventilation and overhead conveyor systems, the modular layout of the glove boxes, the unique programs of materials accountability for safeguards, Scrap recovery and preparation of high-purity plutonium metal are just a few of the innovative features that Los Alamos contributes to the nation's nuclear industry.